So I'm gonna take you all on a little walk with me and Lincoln today. Uh, we like to get out here at least two, three times a week. Uh, if not to always work on birds, you really only need to do that uh, once a week, especially uh, once you've got your dog steady. Uh, but really just to give them exercise, uh, practice a lot of the uh, yard work field commands uh, so that your dog is uh, maintaining a, a steady diet of obedience. Uh, the very first thing that you need to do when you get out to the field is work on the release into the field from the gate. We usually start with him waiting for my release and command to go to start the hunt. He knows not to move until I've given him that command. If they can't do this, there's a good chance they're going to blow up on birds. Okay. Uh, don't do much on this walk except for an occasional reminder to come back to me. Lincoln's recall is set to the tone on his collar. It just gives him a series of beeps and he knows that means he needs to come back and check with me. You simply hit the tone button up here on top of the Garmin 550 Plus. Pressing it now. He knows that means recall. Good boy. Whoa. He is uh, very well cued to the whoa command verbally. He also knows to stop on the lowest level of stimulation on the E. But we have overlaid the verbal command, so he knows that also means stop cold, wait for the release. Okay. And we'll also pra practice the heel command. So he knows to come and just walk with me if I command him to heel. Heel! Took me a long time to learn, but you should always work your dog so that one verbal command and only one verbal command does it. Do not repeat commands. They will weaken over time and he should know to stop when I stop. And generally just a slap on my thigh, he knows to continue the heel, and he knows he's still under the heel command. In the early stages of this, if he gets out really past the knee, my knee is bumping into his antenna, I generally give him a gentle e-collar cue. He knows that means to fall back in the line. He's getting too far ahead. I like to work in, it's in the 70s today, so always making sure you're watching your bird dog that they're not getting overheated is incredibly important anytime you get up out of the 50s, really. Uh, so always try to work in a dip in the stream uh, so that he can cool off and be able to get some water before we continue the rest of the walk. And I'll release him to go hit the stream. Okay. Thanks. Water. We've worked on this so he understands he needs to take a dip, get his chest fully in there in the cold water. That is the fastest way for him to regulate his body temperature down.
Thanks. Sit. Down. Good boy. Stay. And that is a good, chilled, good boy. So a couple more things about uh, what you just saw. The water and keeping your dog cool is so incredibly important because heat exhaustion is actually the number one killer of bird dogs. All the hazards out there, there's nothing that can take a dog out more quickly than getting overheated. And by the time you see some of the physical signs, it could be too late to save them. So we really have to do the worrying for them. They are bred to not stop and to continue hunting. And they really need you to be able to watch that they are getting sufficient opportunities to rest and cool down, particularly in the spring training, particularly in the first warm day when their bodies have not gotten a chance to be accustomed to the heat. Generally, the rule is to add the temperature and the relative humidity and anything over 150, you really shouldn't be running dogs at all. Uh, the humidity can have a huge impact on how quickly they actually overheat. If the relative humidity is 85, 90% and the temperatures are in the 70s, that's actually a no-go. So general rule of thumb is to add those two together for the magic demarcation of 150. It's not perfect, uh, but a lot of experienced bird dog trainers will say that's a pretty handy formula to keep in mind to help you understand when you should not be running a dog and when it's okay to do some short workouts in the summer. Another word about not repeating commands. If you are finding yourself having to repeat a verbal command, that really means you need to back up and you need to reinforce it with some of the tactile cues, whether it's a wonder lead, e-collar, you've had a breakdown in the dog really understanding that it is not optional for them to respond to some of these most important commands like recall, heal, uh, when you're gonna be using that for their safety in the field. Okay. So this is a quick primer on everything starts at the gate. Um, this really is the idea that if you don't have your dog under control when you first start to hunt, when you first start the training session, uh, you're not gonna be able to have them under control in the field. So your dog should be waiting on you for release. And that goes for actually as soon as you open the, the kennel door. Lincoln knows that he is to stay put until he actually gets the release, and his release is a tap on the tailgate. He knows he gets to stand slightly outside of the kennel, but still needs to wait. Typically, I will not have his e-collar on and his GPS and that needs to be added. So that is why he needs to develop the discipline to stand there and wait for me to calmly put his collar on while he himself is calm. I will typically let him down from the tailgate. Don't like him to have uh, unnecessary pounding on his joints especially when he's a young pup. Lincoln is a, just over three years old. Uh, so the more he actually pounds those joints now, getting out of the Jeep and onto the ground himself, uh, the more likely he is to have trouble as he becomes a elder dog. So we're trying to keep that from him. So he knows that I actually need to pick him up and put him on the ground. I do let him kennel himself back up uh, when he's jumping back up into the kennel. Uh, that's not a problem. He knows again that he needs to wait. He's got the prompt, just a couple of pugs, tugs on his collar, 
and he knows that means to stay put. He is all ready for the hunt. I've got a couple of chucker out for him just to make sure he's completely steady. The reason for spring training is uh, bird dogs will come unwound a little bit from tight training uh, from their tight understanding of, of what they're expected to do you know, especially if they're steady to wing shot and fall uh, by the time the hunting season wears on they loosen up in their obedience and spring training is a good chance to get out and uh, firm them up so i've got a couple of chucker out for him to point and i'm going to be watching for any break they are loose they will be tempting he will probably make visual contact all things that are a huge temptation for him and if he does break he'll get a correction if he does not break and he holds steady uh, we'll move on and he also knows to come heel by my side uh, right now we're not working on the retrieve we're simply working on firming him back up uh, to be completely steady to wing shot and fall Okay. He understands which direction I'm going. If I've changed course, he is to pay attention and change course with me. And I'm walking basically straight to the first chucker. Not gonna guide him too much. The wind is almost dead. We had a decent breeze earlier, so this is his danger zone of getting too close, ending up on top of the bird. And that can sometimes be too much temptation for him. And he has established points. And unless the bird has moved, He's a fair distance away from it, which is good. And we've got a good 25 feet or so. Pleased with the distance, especially with the wind. Also a huge temptation to break. Something he would have done by now when he was a puppy. I think he's probably gonna have no problem with this flush because of the distance and he does not have visual contact. He stopped completely on scent. There is our flag. And our little friend the chucker is hanging tight. Good, steady to flush and shock. Marking on the bird, he knows where it is. He is keeping those feet completely planted. Heel. Walking him away from the direction of the bird, which is a little bit difficult for him. Kennel. And that's it. Good day training.